Hello, and welcome to the interesting podcast of Jedi Brian number two. Uh, this week's episode is actually producer Bobby Alvarez. Uh, now, Bobby produced um, Tethered, the movie that I'm in that's going to be out later this year. Um, he also has worked on uh, a couple other things here and there. He went up to Georgia semi recently to work on a movie called um, Frankenstein Created Bikers. And um, Bobby and I have gotten pretty close um, over the months that we've worked together. He's a super, super cool dude. Um, way into horror and the genre we talk about that Um, we cover a wide range of stuff Um, I think you're really going to like it if you like movies or anything like that so yeah here's um, the interesting podcast number two with uh, producer Bobby Alvarez and we are rolling it's like in uh, Bowfinger you know Heather Graham's character She's like sleeping with everyone. She's like, oh, you know, it's like I need more, sc- I need more screen time. Right, <laughs> He's right. like, oh no, you gotta. That's the writer. She's, like, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> like I made a mistake. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm moving it's on. Now. I think it's like four people in. Yeah. yeah. And then she, when uh, Steve Martin finally like pulls her into the office, and it's like, Wait, we're done with this. We're done. She goes, why? He goes, You're sleeping with Carl. She goes, so. Women have. It so I didn't easy think about that. <laughs> They have it so easy. They can just sleep with anybody. I know, dude. Guys, it's so well, much actually, no. There might be. You can find a gay man. Man, you'd have to cross a line. This is true. How bad do you want it? <sighs> Literally I and figuratively. Know. I can. I think I can muster up enough nerve to pitch. Yeah. I don't not, know if not I a catch. catch. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I may. I may just go. That's commitment. Like, yeah. That's like uh, with that you need the guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> If you're going to go all in, all right. <laughs> literally. All right. <laughs> all right. So, Bobby Alvarez, mm-hmm. Bobby Alvarez, you are the producer right now and sound guy. Sound guy. Grip, is that what it's called? Grip? I kind of, you, no, Grip is a, um, Grip helps the camera guy. Grip is the camera guy. Lights what is a stuff. sound guy? Holds a boom sound pole. Sound guy is a boom pole, boom operator. Boom operator. Sound mixer. So you're doing a lot of different hats for te- oh, yeah, Tethered. I mean, yeah, when you do a small production like this, everybody... Chris, me and Chris, the director, were just talking last night about he doesn't know how he's going to do the credits. Like, he doesn't want to, to be sound guy, Robert Alvarez, um, props guy, Robert Alvarez. Yeah, have your name like, show up, the that, credits like be just you. Name. But no, I mean, everybody's doing like a ton of jobs. Right. You got actors, when they're not shooting, are going out for food. Right. Which, you know, it's a family thing. It's really cool. It is cool. How, how did you, how'd you get involved with the project? Um, Dimitri... Blanco, the other producer, he, me, and and know, casting director. We're yeah, we're family, and you know, I guess you could say business partners. We're just we're both filmmakers that want to make stuff together. And he found, I think it was a, it was an ad online. It might have been Craigslist. Yeah, that Chris was just in the neighborhood or in the area wanting to shoot a feature film and looking for help. He got in contact with him first, and then. He told me about it and said, hey, we're going to meet him at a Five Guys. Nice. <laughs> so, I mean, on the way up. And then he handed me like the first 25 pages of the script, which was really cool. And it's it's like this. It was the first draft. Act, yeah, the very first okay. draft. So it was a little different. Not, yeah, I remember. too, too different. The first part of it, he didn't change too much of. But um, yeah, it's basically like like the first. There's like a little action sequence at the beginning. Um, and I liked it. And then we got to meet him. He looked young, which I figured he was young. Sure. But on the way there, we were, Chris, Chris is going to laugh, listen to this, but we were on the <laughs> way there, we were like, dude, because we've, we've contacted people online before. Right. And as, oh, yeah, we got lights, we got this, we could help out anyway. All right, yeah, man, yeah, we're, you know, we're getting ready to shoot in a week. And then you never hear from them again. Right. Like they just they say they're gonna get it done and they don't do it. They just don't start. Lots of talk. Oh, I mean it happens all the time. And it's you know, it's money, I'm sure. it's you know, it's a tough thing to do. Sure. Um <clears throat> we were talking, man, we're gonna get there, this guy probably won't show up and he's probably you know, is he gonna be some crazy guy, he's not gonna have his shit together. We got there and he had his shit together. Like he had everything planned out, he showed us his layout of you know, how when he wants to shoot, how he wants to shoot everything. Um, and the guy was like, man, this guy really has got his shit together. And I really thought he was like mid 20s. Right. Maybe late 20s. Right. And he told me his age. I was like, no fucking way. Right. You're, I think he was, he might have been, is he 19 now? Oh, something like that. I think, 
I think he was still 19, maybe he might have been 18, I can't remember. But I was like, no fucking way that you're that young and you got your shit together like this. But Right. Yeah, and it was that, and then, you know, he finally went off and finished the script. He was like, on several drafts, we read it, you know, gave him notes, he went back and rewrote some stuff, and here we are. Nice. So, yeah, it was fun. It was cool. Yeah, I think when I, when, I, when I first met Chris, I was like, this is a director. I thought the same thing. I was like, he's pretty young. But then I started thinking, like, Spielberg was, yeah. like, early 20s when he made Jaws. Right, right. You know, like, a studio took a chance on someone who, like, yeah. is fresh out of college. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's pretty you cool. You never know, man. When you got it, you got it. it it's true. An idea is an doesn't idea. It doesn't matter right. who it comes from. Right. Absolutely. Right. So you've worked on other productions as well. Um, I know you recently got back from Georgia. Yeah. What did that, you do up there? That was a... It's an independent feature... That's kind of known in, I mean, it's known. Yeah. Uh, it, it's got a, a pretty good following. It's a sequel to a movie. The first one was called Dear God No, okay. which was a, it's a biker movie. Okay. And it's got a lot more stuff than that, though. It's an exploitation film. So it's, oh, like, okay. it's like 70s grindhouse exploitation right. movie. Um, it's meant to be that. And I was a fan of it and loved the first movie. And then... The second movie um, is called uh, Frankenstein Created Bikers. Huh. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it's out there. <laughs> right. You got, like, every time I tell people, I go, oh, yeah, the first one was called Dear God Now, and then Frankenstein Created Bikers, and I always see people's faces like, what? <laughs> like, Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's, yeah, man, from seeing the first movie and then to this movie, and it's actually shot in 35 millimeter film. That's which expensive. is Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and they, it's, oh, just to see that, in action, that was one of the things that I really wanted to get on the set for was to see a film camera because right. you're not going to see that, especially on an independent level. Right. I probably won't ever see that again on an independent level. How was that? Seeing like oh, they changed was, film, I'm sure. Yeah, there's mags and it's like one guy's job. I think he's a second AC. I can't remember his title exactly. Right. But he ran the slate and it was his job every take. To see how much film was used, huh? And then he, like, he's the one that keeps track of the mag and how much is left. And if there's like, I don't know how many feet. I, he knows the math and how many feet. Sure. You know how many minutes a certain feet would give. Right. So if he thinks that it's a long take or too long of a take, or like this next take is going to be like a really long dialogue or something, he says, "Hey, we should probably change this mag." And like you know, they write down, "Okay, we have so many feet on this mag." And he has to keep track of that. He takes the only he takes the mag back, ah. puts it away, puts okay, this mag has so many feet. Then he comes back with a fresh mag, puts it on. They film that. They might go back to that other mag when they have to shoot some small thing, so they don't and, waste. Right, right. <clears throat> Nothing can be wasted. That's oh, of the thing course. with, with of course. film. Like it's <clears throat> the other thing too. It's a lot of rehearsal. It's really? a lot of rehearsal, and they, um, like, they'll rehearse something like seven, eight, nine, ten times before they start rolling because oh, you right. don't want to burn. You've got X film. amount of film, yeah, yeah. sure. So you don't want to burn film, and it's. I mean, it was it was a great learning process, and I worked a lot uh, with a group up there. They're the um, Silver Scream Effects Company. Interesting. And they have like their own. It's like their own little mini studio. We I worked a lot on the art department, building sets and then set dressing. Gotcha. Which is, you know, they'll build the set and build walls and build trap doors and whatnot. Then the set dressers come in and make it look old. Gotcha. And you know, like I mean, I just learned a lot of little tricks. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Like, you can make something look rusty when it's brand new. Right. And you know, stuff like that. And, it was just, it's an amazing learning process. It was a, like, that was a huge family. Like, everybody knew each other there. Really? And I can't wait to go back. I'm going back in July, actually, for a week to finish. Really? I got one more week of shooting. That's so, cool. So film the same movie? Same movie, yeah. Very cool. Uh, that'll be the end. That, that, that week will be the wrap. How was, uh, how was it being on a set, like, of that caliber? different from what we're doing here besides production value like what did you learn as far as how it's run it's and i i mean i i learned this a long time ago sure from uh listening to interviews because i i mean i listen to podcasts and interviews all the time 
there's a director, um, John Landis. Yes, did, I know John. Max Landis' Amigos. dad. Yeah, yeah. Max Landis' dad, right. Um, he always said that no matter how big their production, it could be the smallest independent level sure. to the biggest Hollywood blockbuster, it's basically the same thing. It's just bigger. There's just a lot there's more, just more people, people. Right. doing... There's a one person for each job in the big blockbuster. In the small ones, you're doing the exact same thing. It's only, you know, everybody's got like 10 jobs. Right, sure. You know, and it's a lot less stuff to do. But it's, I mean, pretty much, I pretty much knew a lot of the stuff going in. So that helped me a lot. But, you know, they're definitely, there's dialogue that they use, stuff that they say. They're walking through hallways. If you're carrying something, you got to say points, points coming through. Right. Like it's stuff like that. Um, That's different. Uh, yeah. Names for different things. Yeah. Like clothespins. It's C47s. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Or Striking. stingers. Right. Bring yep. me a stinger. The first time somebody told me, bring me a stinger, I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like extension cord. I'm like, oh, okay. Got so it. So I knew what a stinger was. They, they mean, stuff like that. But man, it, it's, I mean, it was just great. And I really want to be on a set like that again. It was just fun. How was it working with motorcycles? I'm sure that's a lot of wrangling. You know what's so funny? Yeah, I was a... there for about two weeks. All right. Didn't see one motorcycle. Really? In they a motorcycle movie? That, they shot that after I left. They shot another week of stuff, and they shot that stuff then. Gotcha. And maybe, I don't know if in the week that I go back, they're going to be shooting some of that. Because most of that's like all just on the road, and it's all... Yeah, they shoot inserts. it. They shoot it on one, like maybe a half a day, and then they insert it into the movie when they go from one place to another. Right. I saw bikes, guys on bikes and then getting off like they were already parked. Oh, right. Outside. Like the beginning of scenes. Right, like outside of a bar or something like that. Gotcha. But I, I didn't see him driving them in. <laughs> I, was like, I remember thinking that at the end of the shoot, I was like, wait a minute, I'm on a biker movie and I see <laughs> one guy on a bike. <laughs> and as a huge Sons of Anarchy fan, you're like, yeah, bikers, oh, yeah, yeah, I need this. Yeah, man, it was awesome. We talked a lot about Sons of Anarchy on set too. I'm sure there are fans. Oh, yeah, yeah. How how did you get involved in it? Um, I well, like I said, I was a fan of the first movie, right? And a couple of years ago, I met the guy who runs Silver Scream Effects Company. I met him oh, cool. in Atlanta at a convention up there, uh, Days of the Dead in Atlanta. It's a horror convention, cool. And he does it all the time. Uh, Shane Morns, he's up there, um, and his girlfriend Madeline, she's an actress in the movie. He acts in the movie. Oh, nice. Too. And I met them there, and I'm like I said, I was know them, but they did like they knew who I was, my face, but I don't think they knew my name. Right? You know, they only saw me at the convention. Hey, yeah, 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 man, I saw you last year. You know, like that. Hey, that's good. But it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't like they knew me, knew me. Right. You didn't have dinner <laughs> with them, but they right, did remember right. you. But they, yeah, yeah. So you know, it was we had that kind of a relationship, and then this past February, I went to Shock Pop, right, and. Um, they had another table there, and the director of the first movie, Dear God No, was there. Oh. So I came with my Dear God No poster, had him sign it, and then kind of talked to him a little bit, and then became friends with him on Facebook. And then uh. I realized he he started posting stuff. I knew the movie was coming, the Frankenstein created bikers, because they did a, a Kickstarter campaign for okay. it. Okay. So I knew about it, and um, I basically just messaged him, and I do this all the time, I message a director or a producer and say, look, if you need a PA. Right, put know. yourself out there. Yeah, sure. I've always been doing that and I, I've gotten so many no's. I'm like, no, I'm sorry, we just, we, it's not the budget, da 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 can't do it, da 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 Right. Always. And then I figured, I was like, eh, you know, let me message him, see what happens. I, assuming he's going to say no. Right. I, I always got so many no's. Of course. Immediately, he texted me, or messaged me back saying, yeah, man, welcome aboard. You know, we, dude, we, we how did that feel? Out, oh my god, I was like, what, really? <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, then you know they told me, oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like a three week shoot, and I'm like, oh wait, I got a job. <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't think I can get away for three weeks. And then he's like, when I told him that, I was like, oh my god, this, this is gonna suck. Like he's gonna tell me, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about that. Right. He's like, oh man, I get it, I get it. You know, it's it's tough to to get away from work. Sure. He goes, well, can you do two weeks? And I'm like, mm, I probably can squeeze out two weeks. And then I'm like, screw it. Then I went to ask my bosses and, you know, they know that this is what I want to do. Right. So they weren't in the way and they said, you know what? Yeah, man, 
go ahead, take you know, take the two weeks. I'm like, fuck it. That's cool. Message them back and and uh, he says, that cool. We'll send you all the information when we got it, the scheduling and hotel and where you're going to be staying and da 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 da. So that's awesome. Yeah. Where where would you like to be? Because obviously the industry is an interest. Right. Where would you like to be? Like your position. Because some people are like, I want to be a director. Other people, I want to be actors. I mean, everybody going in wants to be a director. Of course. That's I want to, the head I want to, yeah, I want to write and direct. But if I go in and give it my best and end up being just in the industry working. Yeah, there's a dude that, running lights or something. My, my, I mean, I would love to just be working in the industry and making a living doing it and not having to have another job. That's tough to do. Absolutely. But I won't want to do that. So want, in any capacity, you just in want to make capacity, movies? I mean, I. Of course, I would love to make at least one feature film. Right. Like James, who's the director in uh, um, Dear God No and Frank I Created Bikers, he stays in Atlanta. He's like an Atlanta local guy. Really? And he makes the movie, prints it out himself, and sells it himself. Huh. So I'm like, you know what? I'd be happy doing that. Sure. Be, I mean, he has a following. He has a fan following. It's, and it's cool. Yeah. And it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's not Hollywood. Right. Which, <laughs> there's negatives and there's, I mean, there's positives to Hollywood, absolutely. Of course. But there are negatives. Uh, for you know, sure. I mean, you, there is very little creative control when it comes oh, to I'm sure. stuff. Lots of so, corporations. I mean, yeah. You have, even Nolan, who is an amazing director. Right. He had to do two great Batman movies just to make uh, Inception. Right. It's just a to, just to two for one sort of thing. Yeah. And then, you know, then he did the third and then he did, um, oh my God, why am I? The latest Nolan? Late, yeah. Um, Interstellar. Interstellar. This is space one, yeah. Right. So even a great director like that in Hollywood has to like prove himself now. And it's just, sure. Uh, it's all money. It comes yeah. down to money. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's all about the bottom line and it's, you know, it's understandable because they're putting up millions of dollars. For sure. So. It's, they're taking a gamble and it's a right. give and take. Right. For sure. That's why and you the get way a lot the, of... the way the industry is now, you know, basically based on illegal downloads and whatnot. Now, right. the way the industry is, it's, you know, they get, they have to take those precautions and it's changed the business because of that. But like on the indie level, I just, I, I think I, if I was going to be a director, I would like to be on the indie level. Not saying that if I was offered. Right. You yeah. Know, you're not going to turn it down. If I was offered Indiana Jones reboot. Right. Yeah. I would <laughs> You I don't say, say no. no. Yeah, exactly. But, but I mean, it's, you know, I would like to be on the indie level because the indie level, you have a little bit more control. Right. Especially as a director, like you're, yeah. the, it's your project. Right. Very cool. So I, I know you're a huge horror fan. Yes. What is it about horror? Like why why horror specifically? Because that's a encompassing genre. Right. But that's where you're at. Right. I mean it's I don't know, man. To me, it's like a roller coaster ride. People, why do people like going on roller coasters? It scares the shit out of them. Right. But watch you go to any you know uh, theme park, see them going into the the roller coaster and they might be getting scared as they get closer and they might be scared as shit screaming as they're going through it when they come out on the other end what are they doing they, laughing they've got that up. high like oh yeah it's, i mean it's sure it's, it's it's show it's like now being wanting to be a filmmaker I've, it's changed a little bit for me because now i've seen behind the scenes and i know right. how stuff's done so now i watch a it kind of ruins a little bit for me because I'm sure. I watch a movie and I'm I'm looking at okay, they I think they lit this like that and they did right. this and they're using this kind of a lens. Oh, that's the angle they're using, like Right. <laughs> it's it kinda ruins it for me, but every now and then there's a movie that would, you know, take me away from that. And I'm sure. Like, oh, and when it does that, like I get really super excited. Like the conjuring scared me. That yeah. Mo- that movie creeped me out. When I, I saw it in theaters and it scared me, but I didn't I didn't get the real effect for some reason in the theaters. It was great. It scared me. But when I bought it and took it home and I watched it by myself. Lights off? Lights off. I, oh. have to. I gotta watch those kind of movies that like. <laughs> I was literally where I was sitting. I went from sitting straight up like this right. to my feet being up on the, oh, no. <laughs> on the couch. Fetal like, position on like the couch. Just watching the movie. Like, it scares me. That movie freaked me out. And it's, it's rare. Nowadays, especially for me to get scared. Right. Like that. it's, why, it's why do you think, and I, I could be wrong, why do you mm-hmm. think 
horror movies now, they seem to be a lot of paranormal or oh, possession. Man, it, it's you know? trends. It's all trends. Or torture porn, like yeah, Saw I mean, movies. We went, through, we went through the whole zombie phase. Right. And that's, thank God, going away. <laughs> I, I mean, even I, I love a good zombie movie. I love Romero zombie movies. I love Fulci zombie. Right. But it's... It's just overload right now. Right. With and Walking like, Dead being yeah, so mainstream. Yeah, I mean, you know, Walking Dead. I love the comic book series. Um, right. The TV series, I'm not following too much now. I got to get caught back up. It's, it's pretty great. Catch up to that one again. I the mean, latest season's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, that's what I heard. I've been hearing really good things about the latest season. And I kind of got off the train a little bit. So I got I to gotta get back on there and just check it out. Right. See if I can get back into it. But we've seen so much stories and zombies that it's kind of like right okay, it's been done let's just take a break from it move away from it let it sit and you know we'll, right i'm sure it'll come back around oh absolutely like everything right now like you said this paranormal is huge right now. it's all possession it's and after paranormal, paranormal activity. activity after paranormal activity like it became the ghost okay let's do a ghost movie right, right. spirits or like you said possession movie um then you got i see one that's coming through now with movies like Ty West the Sacrament is religious cult movies. Okay. It's starting, I don't know if that's going to be the next trend, but it's. I'm starting to see a lot more religious cult stuff. Gotcha. That yeah. may be the next thing. So so yeah. horror moves in trends. You've yeah. got like, oh, the older ones, you know, Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers, mm-hmm. they're people, right. scre- you know, scream, right. mm-hmm. that go around killing people, then we've kind of got out of that. Mm-hmm. So, okay, okay. So. so it's, I mean, it's just, like a lot of people go in really deep thinking like overthinking and i think sometimes is like um you know how the government is and like it's, sure it's, you've got like the purge <clears throat> the purge that like the home invasion was like one that that kind of came and went that was a little bit of a flash in the pan this the home invasion stuff but there's still some out there yeah it would uh, I, I always think of when i try to think of different horror movies because mm-hmm. i'm not the biggest horror fan myself mm-hmm. but i i yeah. see the appeal um i always liked the strangers Oh, the strangers was because that's that, that's another t- movie like that scared the hell nothing out of happens until right. the end, and you're right. like, "What?" But you're terrified the whole time, right? You know, the, you know the, like I was saying, the Conjuring scared me. Usually, the movies that scare me are this these like ghost shit. Oh, sure. Because Cause cause what do you do? That you can't see. <laughs> like, okay, I have no control over exactly. what's going on, <laughs> um, and like, anything can pop up at any time. So that's why that scares me. Right. But for a home invasion or a slasher movie to scare me, that's got to be right. Amazing. And that movie really scared the fuck out of me. I always think of the scene when they're looking at the house and yeah. then he turns on you just hear bum, 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 yeah, yeah. and then the guy runs up and knocks him out. Right, right. I always say, oh, like it happens so quickly yeah. and that's, t- that's my, terrifying. My whole favorite part of that is the, is the end. With, spoiler. Spoiler. So you haven't seen it but the uh, they, the girl's asking as she's crying, they got her tied up and she's like, why did you do this? And yep. the girl says, because you were home. Because you were home. And it was just the simplest thing and now they're remake. They're not remaking it. They're making a sequel are they? And the guy who did the original, he had a script for a sequel. Right. They're not using it. They're not using him. Uh, so I don't know where the fuck it's going to go. And I, I wish they would leave it alone because that movie really stands alone. That's right. Great. I think it's a great classic. It's not. Movie. It's nuts. It's yeah. very different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I um. Mm-hmm. What did you think of the Purge movies? I I enjoyed them. Yeah, they weren't that. But they, they weren't, weren't horror-y. Bad. They were yeah, more they thriller. Were a little bit more. A little you know? bit more thriller. Like a, a dark sort of. A little bit more future. That's that kind of kind of a. I don't know if it's a post-apocalyptic, but it's future. It's futuristic, yeah. Futuristic and obviously a classic. It was a statement. great premise. Yeah, I love. I still haven't seen the uh, Academy, the second one. The second was good. Yeah, I haven't the seen that was yet. Good. I heard because I, I like people were saying that that should have been the first one, like that. I can agree with that. They should have used that as the first one. It's but, more. It's more in depth and gives right. you a bigger scope of what's going right. on. I love that premise though. That idea of one night, like fuck. everything. Would you do that? Like, I, I think always about think that. Think of the people who pissed right? you off in your life, and you get one night to do it. Ever the fuck. I you think want. of uh, I think of the radio show that uh-huh. he's listening to as he's going yeah. home. When it's like, so what are you doing tonight? He goes, oh, I'm just gonna have a nice dinner with my family. Next caller, I'm gonna find my uh-huh. boss. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, dear God. <laughs> I, I love that when I when I saw that trailer, I was like, oh, yeah, that I'm in. Like, I, that, that was a great premise. The, the story was. Mm. The kid, the, the kid was a coming. bit much for me. Yeah, you know, I was like, just throw the dude out. Like, right, right. You have it, they definitely tried to do that whole like inner conflict. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? What mm-hmm. would you do? Would you let the guy out? Right, right. With your family's yeah. in danger, maybe you right. should think about it. Right. But then it's like, am I awful for thinking it? So yeah. those kind of moves that, that mean, make it's, you ba- think. it's basically a home invasion movie. Yeah, set, absolutely. Set in this. 
Absolutely. futuristic thing. Now, what is your favorite horror movie? I'm sure you've got a bunch, but what's one that like <sighs> well, one you can watch and, over? One and two, to me, always. They, they're always fighting for one and two. I've always said this is... There's an old movie, 1974, Bob Clark's Black Christmas. Really? Is one... It's... A lot of people think it started the slasher thing. Oh, okay. But you can argue Halloween and that. It's right. <laughs> um, that and John Carpenter's The Thing. The Thing. Which is sci-fi horror. I yeah. can still consider it horror because it's so Yeah, I, I would say it's horror. That's terrifying. Yeah. yeah. The head thing. Ah, oh, the spider. I like <laughs> you, gotta be, you gotta be fucking kidding <laughs> First time I saw it, I got terrified because I didn't know it was going to go there. Like, oh, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, and that's a remake. Yeah, and I, yeah. I guess I don't, I don't mind remakes as long as they they're done done correctly. Yeah, as long right. as they're done correctly and they they pay you know a little respect to the original. Yeah, and stay with. Don't have them. Jason Voorhees have a conversation. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. What is it? What is it about those movies that you like so much? Uh. John Carpenter is a thing, besides Kurt Russell being in it. Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> that's a given. <laughs> yeah, we. I mean, that, we could do a whole other hour on Kurt Russell. <laughs> anyway, um, the, the effects to me mostly was the effects, and that was like one of the first time that a movie showed their effects in bright lights. Right. Yeah, I didn't like try to hide anything Bob, with yeah, the light. Bob Bottin, who did the effects, was like always supposedly on the set was arguing with Carpenter, like, no, no, put less lights. I don't, I don't want people to see the rubber stuff. Right. He's, no seams. He's like, yeah. he's like, no, 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 more lights. I want everybody to see it. I want this to be. It was the opposite of Jaws. Not that I hate Jaws. I love Jaws. Right. Jaws is they don't show the they didn't they show the whole Jaws shark. until the end. Yeah. Right? This Carpenter said, I want the opposite of that. I want to show it what the fuck is going on, like what Ooh, this thing yeah. is. And the thing, you know, the whole scary part was that you don't know who the thing is. Exactly. It could be anybody. And even at the end, they leave it, they leave it up it's to so scary. Who's, the, who, the, the dog two guys thing. left. <laughs> oh, and the, the funny uh, inside about that, um, dang it, Norwegian? Yeah, like, yeah. Is that what they, they talk in Nor- 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 Norwegian? I believe so. Well, yes, whatever. I think so. If it's not, my bad well, to the Norwegian people. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what language they talk, but if you speak that language, the guy shooting at the dog at the beginning, he comes down and he's yelling at them in that language. Sure. He says the entire movie. Does he really? <laughs> if you know the language, he spoils the entire movie. He's oh, like, no. he's, he's a thing. He's an alien or whatever. He's just oh, no. And so, us in America, we're like, oh, nobody will get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It shows yeah. over there in the Norwegian. Yeah, like, I don't what? know. I've never, I've never really <laughs> asked anybody. And I know a couple people over there. I should ask them, like, what? Like, do you, does it right. have it like that? Or does it, do they put another language in there? I wonder what they did. Oh, but, yeah. man. That's yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> But that, and then the thing I love about Bob Clark's uh, Black Christmas is, one, it's a horror movie on Christmas, which is, it's always been really eerie to me, right. because Christmas is such a happy time, right. it's supposed to be joyful. Right. And to me, like, the sight of blood on snow is fucking awesome. I don't right. know why. It's yeah, like yeah. pure snow, and then spot yeah. of blood. <laughs> yeah. Um, but actually, there really isn't that much blood in the movie. But it's it's so creepy. There's, right. At so many movies were influenced by Bob Clark's Black Christmas. If you watch it, there's <clears throat> basically it's a sorority house and a guy is calling the sorority house with these vulgar comments like I'm, I'm gonna lick your cunt. You know, it's like, right. like nasty, and they're like freaking out. And then this one girl goes, Shut up, you creep or said something to him like that and he's like still right, right, right. then he just stops and he goes I'm gonna kill you and then hangs up the phone oh no <laughs> and he's basically <laughs> killing them off one by one but the thing I loved about the movie and I think it kind of hurt the movie it wasn't really marketable marketable let me say that right able to be marketed yeah marketable because <laughs> do you never see the killer you see like an eye a close up of his eye and a silhouette of him maybe right but you never get you know his name's Billy from yeah. the phone calls yeah Billy Right. Something about his sister Angus and what he did to his sister. Like oh, it's, no. it's weird. It's so creepy. It's terrifying. And um, <clears throat> you know, it, the fact that you don't see him to me makes him more creepy and, and more scary. Oh, absolutely. But the thing is, like you know, in Halloween, you saw Michael Myers. Yeah, you, you see, see the person see who the killer. You know what I mean? Exactly. And it, yeah, it, it, to me, it helped the movie make make it more creepy, but it didn't help it in. 
in terms of it becoming huge. Because right, because there's no bad guy to there's show. There's no bad guy to see. So there's nothing to market. There's nothing. But right. it's, I mean, it's a, to me, it's a fucking masterpiece. I, I watch it every Christmas. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a fun tradition. <laughs> I, uh, I watch that in Gremlins. Everyone gets to open Christmas. one present on Christmas Eve and watch this. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, those are my two. And then, like I said, I can throw in so many. <laughs> Halloween's up there, too, for me. Yeah. I, I love Halloween. A lot of people give it crap. Like, there's a, not give it crap, but there's a whole freaking rumor. It's bullshit. Right, that, right. Um, Bob Clark, supposedly, there was a conversation with him and John Carpenter, who did Halloween. Right. And Carpenter supposedly asked him, I said, hey, I love Black Christmas. Because Black Christmas came out in 74. Halloween came out in 78. Right. Supposedly, he said, uh, he asked Bob Clark, he's like, hey, you know, if I love Black Christmas. If you were, did you ever think about doing a sequel? And Bob Clark said, yeah. I If I was ever to do a sequel, I would have, Billy would have gotten caught at the end. Then one year later, or almost a year later, he would have escaped from the insane asylum on Halloween. And I would uh, call it Halloween. So people think that, but sure. the thing was when Carpenter got signed on, he, the script already had the name Halloween attached to it. Gotcha. Carpenter's the one that brought the whole babysitters. Right. From the whole family asylum. line thing. So, yeah. Well, that came later. That's that later. came in the sequel. Because right. Carpenter only wanted to do the first movie. Really? It was always a one. Yeah. Even though they left at the end of Halloween, he looks down and he's gone. Right. Supposedly because he was just called The Shape in the first movie. Interesting. He was, he was Michael Myers, but in like the credits it says The Shape played by blah, blah. Good thing they changed it. Yeah. (laughs) He wanted him to be like this entity. Right. This sort of not really thing. Nothing about him. Yeah. Which makes it scarier. Right. Sure. And when they wanted to do a sequel, he had to come up with somewhat of a backstory. Right. And he he says, he he says that it was a night of drinking (laughs) that caused him to put, oh yeah, his sister. Right. but I, I mean, I actually like the second one. The second one was pretty good because it just takes place after Halloween. Gotcha. But yeah, I mean, I can go on and on about my list of horror movies. It all depends <laughs> on what mood I'm in. Has, American Werewolf in London is up there too. Has any of the horror movies you've watched given you nightmares? Because hmm. it's obviously, if it's a good horror movie, it'll freak Maybe, you out. Mm-hmm. Like you'll you'll walk faster to your car. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that. You know. <laughs> well, I mean, I remember as a kid watching pet cemetery and there's a part where the little kids underneath the bed the old man goes to look under the bed and the kid cuts his his killies tendon yeah yeah well i was i was younger then sure i can't remember exactly what age but i remember after that movie for a good year i would run into my room and jump onto my bed and when i got off my bed i would jump off my bed I would never put my feet next to my bed. It's creeped me out. That makes it makes sense. You yeah, know, to have I mean, something little, little things like that, but I can't really remember if anything gave me nightmares. So you've liked horror movies your whole life, even mm. as a kid. When I was a little little baby, uh huh, I hated everything Halloween. Really? There was a um, I'm really dating myself. <laughs> <laughs> there was one mall in Naples. It's still the same mall, but there was a uh, one toy store there, and every year on Halloween, the first, like, I don't know, 12, 15 feet in, they would build this wall. Right. And then in front of that wall, they would put all Halloween costumes, and then on the wall, they would, from floor to ceiling, it would be Halloween masks. Every year. You'd have to walk through that to get to the toy store. Right. I wouldn't go to the toy store. I was like, <laughs> I, I was like fuck you, I'm not walking through 15... Feet. I don't care. Right, you don't have faces it's looking scared. at you. Like I couldn't walk past it. Like it freaked me out. Really? And then I was six years old, and my sister. We were at the house. My sister's boyfriend came to pick her up. She was in high school. Right. And came to pick her up to go to the movies. And my mom, being the way you know, mom <laughs> being sending, a mom sending yeah sending little brother with her so they wouldn't mess around. Right. <laughs> um, sent made her take me take me to the movies with them right she didn't want to but she had to unless if she sure. wanted to go she had to take me so we went and i remember on the way there the her boyfriend was like oh 
I don't care if your little brother's with us, we're still going to watch the movie we're coming to see. Right. That, that movie was Children of the Corn. Which oh. Was in 19 oh, yes. <laughs> so we, the thing was that movie, I was kind of afraid, but then I, I was like, oh, that's so cool. Because you were a kid. I was a kid. So, so like, it was like pretty these awesome. kids, yeah, it's kids <laughs> that killed off all their parents and, you know, they run the town. I'm like, what the fuck is scary about that? That's right. awesome. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> and, you know, immediately after that, I started drawing. Um, in the movie, there's this girl, that little girl that draws, like, cornfields with blood splatter and dead bodies and stuff. And I started drawing that stuff. Then you went to the principal's office? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I went, yeah, I started doing it in school. And, they, yeah, they had a parent-teacher conference and... We went to through the whole fucking. We're going to family therapy, right? But it's it's for you. And you're like, no. Then you start yeah. buying the masks that you walked by. <laughs> right. like, oh, I mean, it was like it was like something went off in my head. It's I just... always told my sister, "It's your fault." Right. And she's like, she's like, why are you into this stuff? Like, it's your fault. Right. Like, you're the one that took me to that movie. But you know, I don't know. It just from that moment on, I just started watching as much horror as I can. That's cool. That's mm-hmm. an interesting story. That like you're so into, and it, you hated it, and then with the I mean, be, with like, the characters being kids, and you that's were a kid. the thing. Well, I didn't think that then. Sure. Yeah, but now, but hindsight. now, yeah, looking back, I'm thinking, yeah, maybe it was because they were just kids, and I wasn't afraid of kids. And then there was still stuff that fucking scared me. Like I couldn't. Oh, like, I'm sure. Poltergeist really fucking scared me. As a well, kid. <laughs> you know, that that freaked me out. Like your TV. Could, Right? I'm in front of that all the time. No. <laughs> it's like the first time people watch Nightmare on Elm Street, they're like, I can't sleep. sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like man. Jaws did Jaws did that to me. Yeah, Jaws, me. you don't want to take a bath. No I mean, pools. Yeah, no pools, no, no beach. <laughs> I, I mean, I really, I can't scuba dive. I, I hate scuba diving because you can only see straight. Right. You can't see You're in their the element. <laughs> and something like, it could be the smallest fish just goes, <laughs> right? Oh, God. I'm freaking out. What the hell is that? Right, yeah. I it's, had, there no. was, there was one movie that like terrified me when I was like 11, so mm-hmm. it's a little older than you should be as scared mm-hmm. as I was. Mm-hmm. It was a uh, Darkness Falls. Hmm. You've said it with the Tooth Fairy, quote unquote. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. It's the Tooth Fairy okay. story. Wow. Oh, yeah, I yeah, remember that one. I don't know what it was. You know, actually, you know, I do know what it was. The, oh, the beginning scene, you know, the whole thing is it's in this town right. where you lose your last baby tooth, you right. put it on your pillow, she right. comes and gets it. Right. If you look at her, she kills you. Right. 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 So already terrifying. <laughs> so I remember the kid loses his last baby tooth. There's that mm-hmm. whole, you know, creepy people talk to him before. Oh, don't worry about tonight. Don't right. look. Right. You know? And I remember he's there and you know, she's there. You know, she's like this it's floating like ghost thing, right, right. you know, with a mm-hmm. mask. Right. And he's laying there under the covers. And he closes his eyes, he closes his eyes. And then he pulls the covers down. And when he opens his eyes, she shows up really yeah, quick okay. and he runs to the bathroom. Now she can't be in light. That's mm-hmm. the whole thing. Like, yeah. turn the light on, she'll freak yeah. out her life. Right. And the scene, he's in the bathroom and he's screaming and crying. And his mom comes in and she's like, "What are you talking about? Nothing's wrong." And his mom gets killed in front of him. Oh, like, slashes yeah, her throat, that. whatever. Right. He goes like he gets sent away for a bunch right. of years. He killed his back. mom. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. Then there's the whole vengeance. Like, oh, I'm gonna get her this time. Mm-hmm. But the the ending of that beginning scene, it started in the bathroom where mm-hmm. he's like in the tub crying, just saw his mom get killed, and it's zooming out. And as it's zooming out, she's on top of the frame, yeah. just hanging out. And then you see her come into it. Something about that right there. <laughs> I had nightmares for like a month. I would That's wake up funny. like, oh, oh, turn the light on. I was like, I'm sleeping with the light on today. Yeah. She didn't get me. Yeah, you know? yeah, man. It's 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 crazy how little things just mess with you. Like there's in Poltergeist, there's a there's a part where, and it's the simplest thing, and they actually do it again in The Conjuring, which made I was loved it, where this kid. He's laying in bed, and they've done this in a bunch of movies, but the kid's laying in bed and looking over to like a chair, and there's like clothes on the chair, but it looks like there's somebody standing there, oh, and it's no. just in the dark, <laughs> and like you're just staring, and like, oh my God, you've done that so many times. <laughs> like you see a shadow in the room, and you're like, oh, Right, you see a lamp, like, but tonight it looks that? like someone in it's your like, room. And you have to turn the light on, just <laughs> the light on for a little bit. Yeah. It's crazy, the, the different things that they have to scare people, and what scares different people. Mm-hmm. Like, my girlfriend, she's scared of things that run. You know what I mean? Oh, like, for some reason, like, Mike Myers is always in the back. Then he'll go away. Walking. Jason is in the back. Yeah. Freddy Krueger, he's oh, down he's the street. Like, then when he starts chasing right. her, 
Oh god! Because yeah. <laughs> she's like, I can't outrun them. <laughs> so she, she's terrified of that's fast, her thing. Fast zombies. That yeah, things that can run and mm-hmm. things that are in the back that the character doesn't see. Oh, okay. Like you know, Jamie Lee Curtis is in the room, and then Mike Myers mm-hmm. goes down the hallway right. and then goes away. Goes, <laughs> right. Oh no! <laughs> gets in her head. Right, right. You know, that's cool. It's nuts. How do you feel about uh, like? I mean, they're not. I, I wouldn't really classify them as horror, but like animals, like Lake Placid. Oh, I like that. I love. I'm a big I, fan. I love that stuff because it's stuff that. Like one of my my favorite Hitchcock movies is right. The Birds. Oh, okay, yeah. But, I mean, I I love Psycho, but hit The Birds for some reason. I, I think it's more the technical shit because they right the way they shot that. Never movie. look at seagulls the same and way looked, again. Oh my god, <laughs> like that! It's terrifying, and I love the trailer to that movie because he just he's sitting there in this room. His trailers were the best because he didn't show a, a clip from the movie. Right, it's just him talking. <laughs> and actually, Welcome they do such some to the movie. Yeah. Right, <laughs> and he's like, he goes. Birds, he goes, yeah, they, because they're very, they're they're so loyal creatures. He goes, what what would they ever do to humans? I mean, we feed them, we keep them chained, locked up. But I'm like, oh shit! Like you think about it, like whoa, we really cheap birds, oh, no. like shit. <laughs> and I mean, it's it's funny. And then you know the birds and that fucking movie was so good. By the end, you pick the bird side. You're like, get it! No, You've been caged long enough. No, that, I mean, it, it's just I love I love stuff like that about nature. Right, yeah, nature fighting it's back. It's stuff that could happen. It's terrifying. Yeah, and a lot of people hate the happening, yeah. which was like the I ultimate was, nature. It, I just, I plants. don't like, <laughs> I don't like Mark Wahlberg. I'm movie. with you. I'm with you. Supposedly, but I dude. really like the idea of nature like causing doing some kind of yeah virus to kill us. Oh like man, it's, I don't know, man. It's something <laughs> that could happen. I went to the midnight premiere of that movie because mm-hmm. I, I worked at the theater mm-hmm. at the time yeah. and. We used to have staff showings for midnight mm-hmm. just to run it through the projector because we used film at the time. Okay. And to make sure it didn't mess up the next day. So we'd have staff showings. Mm-hmm. And we did The Happening, which I was like, oh, it's going to be crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, they were like, it's plants. It's like, no, we're doing, the plants are mad. We're mad around plants. The so plants get mad and make us kill ourselves. <laughs> so I remember walking out of that theater. And mm-hmm. you know, the first step is you repeat yourself. Right. And then you walk backwards and then you kill yourself. Right. So I remember walking out and be like, guys, that was, that was a really weird movie. So Guys, back. that was a really weird movie. movie. <laughs> <laughs> I start walking back. Dude, I've done that so many fucking times. Like little stupid I always, I always think of the tiger. The guy yeah. that's like feeding it and he's like, take my arm. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I, I, mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I, I dig his movies. Yeah? Like he got a lot of shit from the, um, the village. And I like avoided that movie for a long time. Yeah. It's not a great movie and it's not really, It's not his worst. It's not really a horror movie. No, I wouldn't. I it's, mean, it's, it's it's kind of a love story. Yeah, like, I, I love, would say so. Yeah, and it's but it just has these horror elements, and it's it's cool. Like this this community, and they scare their people by right. saying there's a monster to out keep there. them in. Yeah, yeah. it's a good it's, uh, it was a good twist too. Right, that was right. solid. Yeah, you know, I liked it a lot. It was cool. Definitely wasn't his worst. Mm, his mm. worst was Avatar. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, I, mean, I haven't seen that. That was offensively bad. <laughs> to I, you, I'm sure I, you're a fan of the. I saw the it came out on my birthday that year, uh-huh. and uh, I was so pumped for it. And I, I'd never seen the series. Right. I just watched the movie. Oh wow! Like, oh, sweet. Okay, so and I still hated it. I was like, this oh, is, uh, I feel like he just did it wrong. Like I haven't even seen so it. Does, did you avoid was, the uh, the cartoon or the? Uh, no, I just didn't grow up on it. I, for some reason, I was watching Disney when it was on Nickelodeon oh, or okay. something. You oh, know? Okay. And so. Uh, I remember going in, I was like, that was a really bad movie. Mm-hmm. And then I watched the whole series, loved it. The mm-hmm. series is fantastic. Then I went back and watched the movie so I could hate it properly. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But dude, Unbreakable is fantastic. I love Unbreakable. I thought was, I, I, That's I love a it. really, really good movie. I mean, Samuel Jackson plays a character that is unlike him. Oh, it's so good. Like it's he always plays glass. a badass and he's so he's like a like frail yeah, guy. Yeah, he's weird, yeah, he's you know. He's a really weird, creepy dude. I just saw this come as a shock to mm-hmm. everyone. I just saw The Sixth Sense for the first time oh. like two weeks ago. Oh my God. Now, did you? Did you oh, you already knew. If you you, had to have it's known. so ingrained in pop culture. It's had to have spoiled it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like it, people who don't even know what The Sixth Sense is, you just hear like, hey, he was a ghost it's the whole the, time. Oh, yeah. You know, you yeah, don't even have to know what it's yeah, from. Right. And knowing it ahead of time, that flashback that they give you to prove that it's him, mm-hmm. you pick up the first time because you know. Yeah, yeah. But I can say. Nobody makes me feel worse about myself than Haley Joel Osment. Watching that kid get so sad. Yeah. You're just like, oh, God. Have you seen him you know? lately? Oh, yeah. He's big. And he's, he's got a beard and, and hair. Like, yeah, it's just, he's like, funny. As dude, well. I'm glad that he's he went that way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. How was Tusk? I, I liked it. Yeah? Liked You're a big Tusk. Kevin Smith fan. I am a Kevin Smith fan, yeah. You've met him? Uh, not personally. I've been to You've shows. been to his talks? Yeah. I've been, like his I've been uh, to Evening with, with Kevin Smith? Podcasts. How are those? 
fucking hugely inspirational. Yeah, I've heard like you walk out like I'm gonna make stuff oh, in the parking yeah. lot. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I told we went right before we. I think it was right before. Yeah, right before we started shooting Tethered, we went to a um, an evening with, and Chris couldn't come with us. But I remember thinking as we left, I'm like, man, Chris should have went, went there. Right. If he would have been, if he would have went with us, like we would have started <laughs> rocket time. fuel. Oh my god, <laughs> it's so like he's just he's such a positive guy, and he talks to you like like everybody. He's he would stay there forever, man. Just really? everybody answering everybody's questions. That's really and cool. He doesn't. He's not a dick about anything. He really. Oh man, yeah, do it. You know, you, you can do it. Why the fuck not? Like, right. He has this whole why not thing that I even have as soon as I got this is this up uh, holy shit thunder <laughs> uh, he has this whole like um, this why not thing and I printed out a paper that says why not and I have it taped to the back of my door in my room that's awesome because yes every day I look up okay why not why not you yeah this, exactly you, somebody else he, can do it he basically I mean he basically has this whole thing about people saying you know you're gonna you're gonna Jesus <laughs> you're gonna uh, run into why or why people there's so many why people in the world like, oh of course like, why why do you think you can do a movie why do you want to do that why do you want to do cosplay why right you know surround yourself with why not people people that'll say why not why it's not like you? uh not? let's let's do it why not? it's like uh you become the average of the five people right. you make you spend the most time with right, right. yeah i always think of uh uh, I forgot what year it was, but it was like the Kids' Choice Awards on Nickelodeon, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Will Smith won this like wannabe award, mm-hmm. which is who do kids want to be? Right. You know? mm-hmm. And I remember him talking about. He goes, "You are who you hang out with." Yeah, absolutely. And I was, I'm like eight. I'm like, wow. I'm uh, 23, yeah. and I'm talking about it still. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. It's like you are totally right. You the know? company you keep will be your downfall. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, I mean, it's 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 and it's so true, man. It's so true. Living life a little bit. I'm not, I'm not that old but i'm old <laughs> not too <laughs> old it, yeah and i've lived a little bit and it's i mean it's totally true you yeah. gotta surround yourself with like-minded people of course it, it's so good for you of course yeah do you have uh after tethered are you working on anything yourself are you writing uh no, I'm, anything I'm like always that always got stuff yeah in my head <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I got stuff everywhere. the only thing is man that i'm really really and it's terrible i have to get over this fucking fear I'm really cautious of handing people my stuff and saying, "Here, read this. Let me know what you think." Right? It's it's seriously I'm, putting like, yourself out there. It's yeah. It's it's an anxiety. What thing. if they don't like it? It freaks me out. But I got to get over that. I gotta yeah. really have to get over that quick. Of course. But because it's really good to get that feedback. Like I've I've learned that recently, actually, that it's really good to just let people read it, give them, let them give you your feedback, even if they don't. There's things they don't like about it. They might open your eyes to something that you didn't see because you're right. too, too attached to it. Of course. And you don't see it. You think it's perfect. And then when somebody points something out to you, you just listen to what they're saying and di- dissect it. What can you change? Then do that and you see. So, right. Yeah, it's really cool. Which it's really also cool makes it hard to put yourself out there because you're so attached. You're yeah. like, this is my yeah. baby. I think it's right. great. And what if you get it back and he's like, this sucks? Right. You know I mean, I mean? It's, it's, it's just part of the process, man. You got to get used to it. And I'm, I'm, I'm even saying I have to get better at that. I got to get better at letting people read my stuff and saying, okay, give me your opinion. Right. I'm okay with it. I'll right. walk away. <laughs> and, you've made, and you've made good contacts. You know, oh, yeah. Where... Yeah. De- now, definitely. I mean, I'm just kind of starting that. Sure. That whole thing. I want to move to Atlanta at the end of the year. Yeah. So. I've heard Atlanta is going to be like the next Hollywood as far well, as production I mean, goes. There's a lot of shit going on there for yeah. sure. It probably, I don't know if it'll be the last stop for me, but like I said, even if it is and I'm working in the industry and making money to where I, can, sure. I hey. don't need another job. Right. I'm fine. That's all that matters. I'm fine. You know what I mean? I'd be happy with that. That wouldn't be my end game, but I'd be happy with it. I wouldn't be sad. Right. Mm-hmm. Who, um, as a movie aficionado, who's your favorite director or one of them? <sighs> like whose movies that you see their name attached, you're like, I, I will watch this. I don't care. Quinn Tarantino is mine. Tarantino? He's your dude? He could take a picture of a shit in the toilet and say, "This is my next movie," and I might go see it. Right. I mean, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be the first one. Right. Yeah, him, Rob Rodriguez. Um, there's a lot of indie guys that I like. Yeah, Ty West is another guy. A lot of people don't really know who he is. House of the Devil, check that out. Right, The Sacrament, um, Innkeepers. There's, I mean, there's a lot of like indie guys that I really, really like. Um, Adam Green, I like his stuff. Adam his Green. stuff's a little. 
It's a little. The, the, he adds a little comedy to his horror, which right. is kind of cool. Like I love John Landis. Him and John Landis are really a lot alike. But oh man, I don't know. There's so many. But Absolutely. then I respect the Nolans and right. You know the guys who aren't with us anymore. You know the Hitchcock, Kubrick is. Yeah, I can just watch Kubrick's movies without the without the sound, and it's fucking beautiful. Yeah, he's very it's, like I mean, his angles. Everything's uh, art itself. Everything, and yeah. uh, like one of the movies that nobody ever talks about with him is, um, um, oh my god, Eyes Wide Shut. Oh, okay. I don't know if you've seen that with I've Tom heard Cruise. of it. I haven't seen it. Oh, you got to see that movie. Really? It's. I mean, it's really about a husband and wife relationship. Right. But it's so creepy. There's like, there's like this fucking secret society involved and it's it's oh, really man. like he gets involved in some With Kubrick, shit Kubrick that's like mind melty oh there's <laughs> a scene in there that I'm like that's so fucking perfect <laughs> I love the way it's shot the music it's beautiful what is your favorite Tarantino movie because he's because a lot of them are solid oh, movies I, I mean to me his mas- his masterpiece is Inglourious Bastard really I, I have not heard that one love that really movie. what is it about it that you like that movie's ri- just the dialogue is fucking amazing. Yeah, I think I mean his dialogue is like out there anyway. Right. And I love Reservoir Dogs. I love Pulp Fiction. I, I like Jackie Brown a lot. Yeah. Um, I like Death Proof. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like a lot of people. And right. Kurt Russell. Sure. But. And I love Django. Django was awesome. I love Django. And he won the Oscar for Django. I think it's because I think the Academy knows they fucked up by not giving it to him for Inglorious. I think. Right. Because Inglorious to me was fucking flawless as far as there's just a, a, a saloon scene or bar scene that's like 20, 20 to 25 minutes long. Right. And it's just dialogue. And, the, and then there's like a huge fucking shootout at the end. Right. But. That movie was just... There's so many great characters in that movie. There's no small character in that movie. Right. And Christoph Waltz won the Oscar Christ, oh, both times for him. He's amazing. He's fantastic. I, I, so I think my favorite role of his was in Django Unchained. I just oh, love... Oh, he was... Yeah, I he just was love great. Dr. King Schultz. He was great, yeah. Yeah. That so guy's good. such a great actor. And I loved... That's another thing, too, that I... <clears throat> I respect that about Quentin, that when he made... Um, when he made Inglourious Bastards, he could have used a lot of actors and put them in... German roles. Sure. He's like, no, I want German actors in the German roles. Americans is Americans. Da, 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 da. Right, French is French. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, there was a couple guys that he used. There was a couple Australians he used for British, Brits. And right. Stuff like that. But <clears throat> for the most part, like, he wanted the Germans all to be German. Like, Leonardo DiCaprio, I don't know if you know, he wanted to play the Jew Hunter. He really? He wanted to play that role. He said that he, I learned German. Like he, what? he wanted to, like he, he read the script and he wanted to play that role. And Quinn's like, look, man, I'm, I'm sorry, but I want a German to play that role. Wow. And then that's why later then, when he wrote him for Django, he put him in. Interesting. He wrote that character for him in Django. Interesting. And mm-hmm. Dr. King Which Schultz I would have German. loved to have seen what's his name try to play that role. Yeah, right. But I mean, it's, I just love that. I respect the fact that he, you did that. Yeah, it's, for, all, it's an extra it's bit. All, most of the movie, like my dad doesn't like that movie and he loves war movies. Right. But he really doesn't like it because he has to read. Oh, right. You have to yep. read all that dialogue. Right. So there's very, the only English stuff is the stuff with the bastards in it. Which isn't so, much. With, yeah, which isn't that much. And which I fucking, I was like, wow, that's fucking really cool. That was, that was mm-hmm. my biggest like surprise and kind of eh with it. Because it is a great movie. Mm-hmm. But it's called Inglorious Bastards. Bastards. And I wanted the Inglorious Bastards. Bastards. It's about a girl. Yeah. The whole yeah. movie is yeah, about yeah. her. About her revenge. It's getting up the theater and all that yeah. stuff, which yeah. is good. But yeah. I was like, you can't be like the Bear Jew and show <laughs> me twice. <laughs> oh, the Bear Jew. When, they, you know? the, when he revealed the Bear Jew for the yeah, first the time. Yeah, the pink, boom, pink. You hear that? Yeah. Boom, boom. Like the music. I'm like, oh, that's so. When he comes out, that, it was so. I fucking love that scene. That, the, and I even respect the fucking. Excuse me. Sorry to all the Jewish people, but I respected that fucking Nazi for saying "fuck you." Right. <laughs> I'm not telling you where my guys are, and he took it. Yeah, that's he how it was. A, he took a, a, a club to the head. That that was one of the first scenes in a movie. Like you know how some things you'll watch the same thing like a hundred yeah. times, but then you'll get to the, like, oh yeah, that one got me uh, weird. Yeah, I, I, when yeah. he that scene specifically, I remember seeing it in the theater. Just, I was like, oh, oh. You, you see the head like the yeah, it's and like, then he keeps going, going yeah. and then he's all. Whoa! 
oh at the end yeah yeah, yeah I was yeah. like oh god I just feel, I feel I, gross I love that that's another thing with the dialogue I love that line that Brad Pitt like uh, he goes hey Donnie we got us a German here and wants to die for his country oblige yep. him yep. <laughs> I'm like oh that's awesome. so good I, I just, the way he range. uses words Django for instance at in the opening scene um, Christoph uh, what the hell is his name Dr. King Schultz Dr. King Schultz is is sitting there and he's telling he just killed the two slave owners. Oh yes, and he's the, talking you've to got the two slaves. two options. He could easily say, "Go north," yep. or "Go go," you know, whatever. He says, he, "No, no." The lines like, "Go to a more enlightened part, yep, of, this more enlightened part of the country." And he goes, "And to uh, any if there are any astrologists in the he goes, yep. the North Star is that one." Yeah, like that. I'm God, like, who says that? Like, why don't you? Do, it's like, so good. I love that. My my favorite bit of dialogue in that movie was the "Bring me the marshal, not the sheriff." sheriff. <laughs> now bring me the yes. now bring me the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> you promise you will not shoot us on sight when we leave this building. Yes, you mean shoot us like a dog, shoot like dog you did our sheriff. <laughs> yes, that is exactly what I mean. Like a dog in the street. <laughs> the love. really long speech. Actually, you owe me two hundred dollars. <laughs> I love what Django goes. <laughs> so like, he's crazy <laughs> perfect I, yeah. I love Django and Chain Django something, and something Chain about it awesome. I love westerns I, oh I'm a huge spaghetti western fan it's like, so good I love the, um, Hateful Eight's coming oh man I can't wait for that <laughs> Tarantino western again <sighs> and Kurt Russell yep and he's Dude, got he's got the Wyatt stash mustache I'm ah like, beautiful uh, Tombstone is my favorite Tomb, western Tombstone is one of one of my favorite I mean I, I go back to the spaghetti westerns but sure. Tombstone and I, I fucking love Young Guns. And I know Young people, Guns is good. I, I just saw people that recently. give it a lot of shit because it's like, it's like an 80s. It's got that. Because it's got oh, rock. It's yeah. got like, like 80s rock in it. Yeah. And it's, I dig it's it. Not, it's not the real story of, of, of Billy, Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid. Yeah. I don't actually want to see a real actual story of Billy the Kid. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Have you seen, um, uh, oh my God. Uh, the assassination of Jesse James by the coward with Brad Pitt. Ford. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's nice. That, I love that movie because it's so realistic. Yeah, oh yeah. I love how realistic that movie is, and the character, the actors are fucking amazing. That I love, I love Tombstone. Mm-hmm. The Tombstone's my favorite. Mm-hmm. Very close second, the True Grit remake with Jeff Bridges. Oh yeah, that was good. I saw it like three times opening weekend. That was really, really. I good. love Jeff Bridges. I don't Jeff know why. Bridges, Jeff Bridges is amazing. I saw. I mean, I love Tron. You know, yeah. I love Big Lebowski. Right. But I remember when True Grit came out. Something just clicked. I was like, "Yeah, this." I love the accent that he picked, where you can mm-hmm. like kind of right. understand. You know, yeah. I loved that. Mm-hmm. You know, Haley Steinfeld was fantastic. Mm-hmm. But just something about that movie. I was like, I just, I just really like it. Saw so yeah. Friday by myself. Then yeah. I was like, "Hey, friends, let's go see it Saturday." It right. Sunday, I'm like, "Hey, parents." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you, Jeff Bridges is amazing. Have you ever, you ever seen Starman? Oh yeah, yeah that was his first his, big one. His performance, dude. In that. dude I just so watched good. that maybe. Four or five months ago, yeah, and I just I popped out of like an old VHS and I popped it in and had a fucking. Movie. What's a VHS? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know what that is. Okay. I know what that is. Right. <laughs> I have a ton of them still. My, but, my dad's like, these are worth something. It's like, no, oh, they're not, yeah. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> well, his performance in that man, just being like, you know, like he's kind of like a bird, like he's just looking around, yeah, like, figuring oh, stuff so out, good. and it's so it's such a good story. I love this story. You know, the alien comes down and makes him like takes the image of a dead husband. And right. She freaks out. It's and then they're running from the government. It's, it's really so it's a good. Kid, really fun. Really good movie. That's a John Carpenter movie. Oh, okay. I yeah. didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. He's done so much stuff. John Carpenter's won. That's one of my damn things with the Oscars. It pisses me off. John Carpenter, uh, Hitchcock, and Kubrick are probably three of the most influential directors of all time. Yeah. Never won an Oscars. Good point. DiCaprio. Yeah. Never's won an Oscar. Yeah. And he's phenomenal. No, I, I thought he should have won it for Jen, or Jenga. He I agree. I completely agree. Or at agree. least, not, I don't think he was nominated. No, I don't think so. I don't think he was nominated nope. either. That Dude. sucked. I mean, Aviator won and he was in it. <laughs> so he takes some solace. The, the reason I thought he was going to win it for Jenga was because it was so different. He always plays like the cocky guy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, he was great in Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, dude! But he was still that cocky guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what you call it? He played a cocky guy, but he was a Southern accent. It's like he played it so evil. I thought, I thought for sure, man, he'd at least get nominated. Right? He'd probably. Win. The whole actually cutting his hand yeah, and yeah. continuing, oh, that, continuing the, the dude. Yeah, that's uh, that and was, nothing, still nothing. Yeah, crazy. Still, I don't know what what the deal is with him. Man, 
So grind up films. Mm -hmm. Grind up films is your your thing. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. It's basically if fuck, we can go back to Tarantino, right? Um, man, I like I said, I've been wanting ever since I watched back in the day on MTV. I'm dating myself again. MTV played this uh, the making of Michael Jackson's Thriller. Okay. Which is basically the making of a music video. Right. But it was the first time that I saw, to me, I think it was kind of the birth of the behind the scenes. Like after that movie started, they had that stuff, but like only film students got to see the behind the scenes of stuff. Right. Or you would read about it in, in articles and shit like that. This was like an actual documentary about a making behind the scenes of something. It was like two layers deep. Yeah. I mean, they showed the makeup. That, that was my first love is that I wanted... I want to do makeup. I wanted to be really? like Rick Baker and be do the makeup like effects like that's cool. Werewolf yeah, transformations and stuff. I, I I'm just not that talented. Right. <laughs> but, it's it's art. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of hard work too. I I respect that stuff and I love watching how they build the shit. And right, it's amazing. You look at it and then sometimes you see something shot live and you're like, oh my god, it looks terrible. Right. When you see it in the angle on the camera and how they light it and everything looks sure. fucking phenomenal. Sure. It's like people showing and up like orange cut, or yellow. When it's cut yeah. together, it's it looks great. Right. Well, the first time I saw that, I was like, okay, the bug, I want to do movies. I right. want to be involved in this. That was movie. it. I want to do this thing. But I lived in fucking Naples. And back then, <laughs> Naples was nothing. Right. There was no internet. Oh. So I had no way. I had no, I don't know what film school is it where the hell do I go for film school <laughs> it's that dreamland so yeah so it was kind of like an you know an unreachable dream right and I was reminded of that by a lot of people I I'm sure I won't name any names but a lot of people say no, that's, come on what the hell are you going to do with that how are you going to make any money how are you gonna yeah money? so I kind of like okay I guess I can't do it so you kind of start believing of course I, I, I committed the cardinal sin and I gave up on it I'm like I'm, right. I'm not I'll be a fan but I I can't do it. Of course, live, especially when you're surrounded Naples. by who the hell, you know. Maybe if there was a if there was a guy who would have made it before me, that would have given me something to shoot. But right. I didn't know of any, so you know that was it. That was done, and it was years later. I think it was like 2007 or 2006. I went to the theater and watched Grindhouse. Okay, Quentin Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez's Grindhouse, which yeah, was, yeah. I just this is a fucking cool thing about fucking fate, which I'm not. I'm not if I'm a believer of. Right. But it's funny that it's this grindhouse exploitation movie. Okay? Right. And it was the best, seeing it in theaters, it was the best experience I had in theaters with because cause the crowd was laughing. Like it was, you right, know, it was like the right crowd. the movie. Sure. And it was, oh, it was like a party. I was like, wow, oh, that was so amazing. I want to do this. Like I was like, fuck, I want to make movies. Like there's right. something in me. I want to do it. Reignited that flame. So yeah, I reignited it, and then Grindhouse, eh, grind, grind up. up films. So that's, gotcha. Fuck it, let's do it. That's so cool. I'm like, okay, grind up films. There it is. I'm gonna try to do this again. And then, like I said, I've been chasing it since then. Right. Funny thing is, I just got like I just talked about. It, I got my first real in a, on a feature length, like pretty big budget movie. Right. It's an exploitation grindhouse. Right, movie. full I'm circle. Like, Fucking cool. That's like, like that's so weird. That's that awesome. That so um, we'll see where it goes from here. But yeah, that's uh, it's basically it's it's a film company that I want to get it started. A production company that I, you know, whatever I make, I want to attach my name to. Cool, so, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. It's a cool name. Yeah, thank Pe you. People know what to expect from it. Yeah, and it's yeah. your it's your tag. It's personal to you. That's right. really cool. Right, right. And if I fail, I can always go into porn with Grindr Films. Exactly. exactly. I like the versatility of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to change the name. Right? <laughs> Genius. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How are we doing on time? Shoot. An hour and three minutes, dude. Well, that perfect. <laughs> that went by really fast. <laughs> dude. So, Bobby, where can people find you online? You can find me at Robert Alvarez. That's A-L-V-A-R-E-Z. On Facebook, uh, Instagram, Grind Up Films. Cool. Uh, Twitter, Grind Up Films as well. Perfect. Um, that's pretty much it. We have a Facebook page for Grind Up Films, but we still, there's nothing up there right now. It's in production we phase. Took, yeah, we took some stuff down and 
we're kind of re figuring that all out and, reinventing and putting stuff up that once we got some some material some short film stuff that we've already shot but we're editing when we get that up we'll have that up thank yep. you so much for coming i really appreciate it you're welcome man. we will definitely have to have you back on yep i will tell everybody about this man. yeah <laughs> this is awesome Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. It's actually the first time I've been on podcasts before as like guest host, but not I've never been a guest. Hey, there you which go. Which is cool. Thank there you. Go. Absolutely. Dude, yeah. You You're the man. I'm just copying you. We didn't talk about you. I know. That's why I like it. That's bullshit. <laughs> that sucks. Maybe next time. All right. All right, dude. I'll see you later. All right.